Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today I want to talk about watches in terms of people wanting something but they can't afford it. And <laughs> it's sort of like, you know, you can pine after something all you want and it doesn't mean you're going to be able to afford it. But let me, let me sort of give you some perspective. No matter what watch you have, there's always going to be somebody with a better watch. Uh, they're going to be better looking. They can be smarter. They're going to be everything you want to be, but better. That's uh, just the way of the world. It doesn't matter how rich you are. Uh, there's someone else is going to be richer or someone else have better taste or a prettier wife or a better looking husband, whatever. So best to get over it <laughs> right away and see what you can do. Uh, one of the very first watch time shows I went to, everybody's looking at each other's wrist and say, oh, what do you got? You know, and I, I forgot what I had at the time. Uh, I, I think I'd recently bought a FP Jean Chronomet Surveyn. And I said, oh, I got, I got this. And some guy says, oh, I've only got a Rolex. And I thought, what do you mean you only got a Rolex? Rolex is a nice watch, but it points to sort of like no matter what you got, someone's got something better. So what my advice is, is that if you can't afford the watch you love, love the watch you can't afford. So let's take a look at some watches that you can't afford or you're more likely to afford versus ones you'd like to have. One watch I've always liked is a Rolex GMT Master II Pepsi. Always liked it uh, for a GMT. And, but it, it, it's something, 10550 this is more than I would want to afford for a Rolex. Or if I were younger and was, you know, starting off and didn't quite have that kind of money. On the other hand, it, you can find a Tudor Black Bay GMT. Uh, for their list price is forty one seventy five, compared to ten thousand five fifty. In other words, they're less than half of what the Rolex costs. Both companies are owned by Rolex. Tudor's owned by Rolex, but I found a pre-owned one for twenty seven hundred dollars. A pre-owned Tudor Black Bay GMT, great watch, very similar to the Rolex, but it's not a Rolex. So it's, you know you're not going to die. But it's not, you know, it's not a Groenfeld either, or it's not a, a lot of other things that it could be. So don't worry about it. Learn to love it. Let me give you some more examples. There's, someone was asking me about a Allanga und Sunda uh, Zeitwerk. And um, to tell you the truth, I, I hadn't thought about much of it, but a brand new version came out. And so I looked it up and was looking at it, and boy, it is a nice watch. It's got a jumping hour on the left side and a jumping minute. So it's a, like a digital watch, but it's digital in terms of presentation. However, what it, what it is, it's a standard mechanical watch. It's also $145,000. So <laughs> I, no matter how much I like it, I can't afford that. On the other hand, there's another German watch called the Meistersinger. I, I, to tell you the truth, I've never been crazy about Meistersingers, those one-hand deals. It's too much work to try to figure it out, especially with my shoes on. So, uh, But this one I really like. It's got a jumping hour at 12 o'clock, and then it has your the hand that goes around to the different minutes. And I really like it. It's sort of a cool thing. So it's another way of having... <laughs> having your time uh, almost digitally, okay, rather than the the usual 12, 3, 6, 9, etc. Uh, this Meistersinger Saltor has the, the, the actual numbers, the 60 numbers. So that's another, it's an alternative. And instead of $145,000, it's only $34.95. And that is the list price. Again, these things you can find elsewhere for less. Now, another one, FP Journe Chronomet Blue. I've heard, you know, people just love that watch. Uh, and, and it is a, it's a very nice watch. It's tantalum, 39 millimeters. 
uses this caliber 1304, 3 hertz, 21,600. Now, the MSRP is around 30,000. These things have become rare as hen's teeth for some reason. And they've always been popular, even though they're, they were like the entry entry level FP Jorn at one time, and I think they were right around 20, but now they're right around 30, and that's if you can find one. Uh, if you can find a pre-owned one, I looked at them, and the best deal on a pre-owned uh, Chronomet Blue was $70,000. That's just, <laughs> whoa, even 30000 is something that's going to, just say, hey, you can't get that. On the other hand, another watch that has that sort of, um, I won't say quite sporty, uh, but it's just sort of a nice time-telling watch uh, with th uh, it's three hands plus a date, is the Jauder Lecoutre Master Ultra Thin Date. That's a nice watch. Now, it's 8600 which is not cheap. Uh, it's not a matter of going from super expensive to super cheap. It's to going to what you can afford. Now, in looking around for this, and this was on sort of on a secondary market, I saw this same watch for 6820 So it's, I mean, that's a huge difference between it on the, on the secondary market it was two thousand, roughly two thousand dollars less than the MSRP. Whereas on the secondary market for a blue, <laughs> it's about two and a half times as much. So something this would I, I think would be something you could really love too. Now the final two I'm going to take a look at is an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. I love that watch. I was it came down between a Royal Oak and a. Uh, overseas when I was first uh, sort of looking into this level and uh, the guy this I, I offered both of them the same amount and the guy at the uh, I happened to get a guy at AP was snotty it wasn't at AP it was the secondary market as so I didn't like him but I liked the guy <laughs> the other one at at uh, the where I got my overseas and so I had an overseas uh, the point being was that back then it was, you could, you know, not too many years ago, really five years ago or so, you could you could get much better deals. You can't get that anymore. These things are, this price is $26,600 for an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. Now, um, one of the big things about the Royal Oak was the design. And the design was done by a guy named Gerald Genta. And he designed the case and sort of the looks of it, and it was a huge hit. Now, Bulgari is known for more sort of jewelry and luxury items and so forth, but they also have a line of watches that are real watches. They're not luxury watches, they're actual really good uh, watches. And one of them that for some reason has been overlooked a lot is the Bulgari Roma. Now, there's another one called the Finissimo or something like that that's pretty popular. But this one is a really good watch. Now, I mentioned Gerald Genta. Gerald Genta worked for Bulgari, I think, for a year or so um, and wasn't the greatest relationship, <laughs> is my understanding of it. And the the thing of it is, though, he had influence to what extent he was credited with that influence is another story. But you have the same octagon shape on the dial, and you have a, it, it is an influence. It is Gerald Genta type of case, whether Buari says so or not. <laughs> I'll put it that way. They have their own caliber. It's caliber BVL 191. It's, it's a 4 hertz, 28,800 uh, semi oscillations per hour, same as the uh, Audemars Piguet, except the list price is 7,050 instead of 26,000. But I can tell you right now, you go looking for a Bulgari Roma. It's just a straight up Roma on the secondary market. 
Uh, this doesn't even include the pre-owned market, but the secondary market, and you can pick one up for easily 5,000 something. But it's a, it's a, you know, here you have these two watches with very similar designers and a lot different price. So anyway, when you're thinking about that, remember, you know, no matter what watch you get, you can save up all your life for a watch and someone's going to have something that they think is better. Uh, so don't worry about that. You know, find watches that you can afford that you love. Take a look. Anyway, uh, this is an opportunity to subscribe if you'd like. Bill Sanders for Watch Art Society, the art and science of watch collection. Take care.